Hello, everyone, and welcome to the EFG Show. Today is a very special EFG Show because my name is Stephen Dutzman. I am the host of EngageFamilyGaming.com. No, I'm not even the host. I'm the, the founder of EngageFamilyGaming.com, and I'm joined <laughs> by Jeffrey Walker from the Frozen North, one of our community managers. And today is special because today was the PlayStation 5 reveal ad event. A a dent? I don't even know. I can't even talk. So today was the PlayStation 5 reveal event. That is such a big deal. Lots of games were announced. So, Jeff, you and I are going to go through them one by one, including the grown-up the grown -up stuff. And we're going to just kind of talk through our impressions. Uh, we're going to talk about the consoles, them, uh, the console itself. And uh, we'll talk about, you know, whether or not this conference... I mean, we, we can't really call it a conference, but what this, whether or not this video met our expectations. Jeff, um, this, is, this is crazy stuff. That's why I just wanted to yes. jump right into it. You just watched it because you didn't get to watch it live. Um, how much of it was spoiled before you managed to hit play on YouTube? So the stuff I am excited about was the stuff that was spoiled. So oh, I great. don't think, yeah. So the stuff that I was super excited about to see that I would have had more of a reaction was the stuff that was spoiled. So, all right. All right. Well, but so what, what can you do? I mean, it's still a great, it was still a great event. It was absolutely. It was super fun. Don't mind me, everybody, while I share this around, um, because we are going to go ahead and put this, and I got to put this in the Engage Family Gaming community, um, and also, and I have to be very careful not to accidentally put this into groups that I am in that I am not allowed to share things in, because <laughs> that would be bad. Um, okay, I did it, and now I'm going to share to my own page. Don't mind me, everybody. And let's see here. Where else am I supposed to share this? There we go. So we did it. Fine. You know, they delayed it a week. I think it absolutely needed to happen. Uh, it was the right decision. And so now here we are. Uh, it happened. Uh, it was at 4 o'clock Eastern. Uh, I was able to watch it live. Um, before we get into the games, just overall, Jeff... One to ten. What were your impressions of the of the? Th we're gonna call it a conference. I'm just gonna call it a conference. What were your impressions from beginning from, to end? All right. So if I had to give it a ranking, is that what you're asking? If I had yeah, to get a, a score, one to ten, ten being the best. What, what do we got? I would give it a seven. Okay. And that I don't want people to look at me be, be mad. Like a seven's a good score. Now, if it was just the stuff I was super excited about, it'd be a 10 for okay. some of these games announced. But there, in my opinion, there was too much filler that I didn't care about that I even started zoning out towards the middle. Um, okay. So, for example, um, I highlighted the family-friendly games I was interested in in my little document I made. And counting the end when they announced the console, there were 27 announcements, I will say. Unless I missed okay. one. Uh, that sounds like a lot. Yep. That sounds like a lot. So the ones I had highlighted were number two, number four, and number ten. So in the first ten things announced, then the next one I had highlighted was number 26. So that middle part, I just kind of fell off. Okay. I guess that's fair. That's fair. Um, I would give it like an eight or a nine for me. Um, here's what's... The thing that happened is it started off incredibly strong, and they kept filling it in with more... Kind of, the, the filler was all family-friendly games, which is important to us. So I totally yeah. get what you're saying. So um, before we get into the PS5 stuff, we do at least need to do our homework. Jeff, every week, you do a video game release list where you go through and find all the video games rated T and below... Publish that on the Engage Family Gaming Facebook page, which we then also turn into a blog post on EngageFamilyGaming.com. Jeff, why don't you tell us what video games came out this week? Yeah, so this week, from the 7th through the 13th, we had on Tuesday, June 9th, 1971 Project Helios on Xbox One and Switch and Jump King on Xbox One and Switch. Mm -hmm. Then Wednesday, June 10th, we had Demon's Tier Plus for Xbox One and Switch. 
Uh, Thursday, June 11th, we have Beyond Blue for PS4 and Xbox One, and Evans Remains on Xbox One and Switch. I want to stop you for a minute there. Beyond Blue, I actually played this game at PAX East. Well, it would have been not this year, but last year. That game is super cool, science-based. You are exploring the ocean. Um, it's very neat, very serene, very cool. Plays out like a role-playing game, but you are kind of adventuring in the ocean. So if you like, you know, if you love underwater levels, that game's for you. That's the Car- thing. I hate underwater levels. Okay. So, due to the lack of games coming out this week, this is my pick of the week because it looked like the best game coming out. It is really good. But, but I don't know if I'll actually play because I do. I hate underwater levels, any of them, in any level. Whether it's a 3D platformer, a 2D platformer, an adventure game, just anything that has me run around on land and decides to slow things down by throwing me in the water, I do not like. All right, that's fair. To be fair, in this case, it's it's all underwater, so yeah, it so doesn't maybe slow you that, down. That'd be the difference. Maybe I, because I'd be used to it, but I mean, even like I think I played Abzu a little bit and didn't like it because of the floaty underwater controls. Can't really blame you on that. Um, I wasn't uh, a big Abzu guy myself either. So, and then on Friday, June twelfth, we had Dots Eight for Switch. Goosebumps, Dead of Night for Xbox One, Pewpa for Switch, Rogue Robots for Switch, Super Toy Cars 2 for Switch, and Warborn for Xbox One and Switch. Okay. So. Right. So, not a lot of choices this week. Um, nope, I guess if you like Goosebumps, uh, Goosebumps, Dead of Night is a first-person survival horror game. Um, I mean, I guess. Uh, Rated E10+. plus. To be fair, um, that's a that's a Letter Kenny reference. In case you didn't know, Jeff, I don't know if you know what that show is, but it's definitely not for the kids. Anyway, um, okay, okay. So we did our homework. Now let's talk about the exciting stuff. So today, yeah, four p.m. Uh, they held they they held their conference. They posted their video, whatever. Um, here's what I'm gonna do, folks. I'm gonna just run down the announcements. I have a list of them all in order. We'll do even the ones for the grown-ups. I, we will talk about the ones that are going to be for the grown-ups very briefly, uh, but then we will move on from there. So how about this for a very weird decision? Um, pardon me while I sit up. Uh, they opened the show with Grand Theft Auto V. That was weird, Jeff, don't you think? Uh, so earlier today we had a just... On our EFG, on Engage Family Gaming staff page, someone asked, any predictions for today? And I threw that as a joke answer. You did. And I was right. You were right. The only, I mean, yeah, we, I decided not to do predictions on this one because there was no, there was just no way we were going to have time to do anything real. And yeah, you predicted it. I'll take the title. I'll just take the title virtually. I mean, I was right. I mean, you can do whatever you want, but I'm the one that gives titles. So, um, I'm the commissioner. Actually, I'm not the commissioner. The commissioner is watching. We're not giving titles out today. Um, I own the site, so I can do what I want. Um, so they started with Rockstar, the, and they started with GTA V. The big thing is uh, they're doing an enhanced edition. It's coming to PS5, um, and it's apparently also coming to Xbox One X or Xbox One Series X. It is. Uh, not X, no, Xbox Series X, not Xbox One. Goodness gracious, that's going to be annoying over the next handful of years. Um, sure, great. Um, the Enhanced Edition is not coming until late next year. So I am very curious what their announcements are. With that said, I have never played Grand Theft Auto V. I don't you really have, have any intention to. Uh, something also that's interesting, they called it the Extended and Enhanced Version. So I'm wondering if they're adding some extra storylines. <laughs> possible some extra story content now it'd be curious how they did that i without spoiling i'm not going to spoil the ending but there's a very big decision you must make at the very end of that game okay well so i mean who knows well we'll find out um so that is gta 5 now they immediately followed that up now that was clearly just a you know thing uh, they made a point to say that that franchise has been on every major PlayStation platform, so I think that was just kind of a cool way to 
kind of tie everything together. Um, but the first big announcement came right out the gate. It took me a few seconds to realize what it is, and that was uh, a new... Oh, it's nighttime? Good night. It's bedtime. Hopefully she'll actually stay there. Um, <laughs> unlike last week. So, um, they announced a new Spider-Man. Spider-Man, Miles Morales. This way, this time it's actually going to focus on Miles, who, um, I guess, spoilers, he's in the first Spider-Man game. You figure some stuff out. Um, yeah, it's coming holiday 2020. Now, that was the big surprise. That was a surprise. Yeah, I expected that maybe to come out next year, may even 2022. Mm-hmm. Listen, when I saw once I recognized the shape of Spider Man, and if you want to watch the watch the trailer, they're all up on YouTube. I was like, okay, Spider Man's here. That's cool. Um, but there's the the real stun was when they said that it was holiday 2020, which means this year, this year, <laughs> they're gonna release um, a new Spider Man game. And it's going to feature, heavily feature, Miles Morales. Looks like it had some more science fiction elements and you know, some really cool stuff. I am all in on a new Spider-Man. In fact, at the end of the press conference, when I was talking to the general about it, she was like, so what does the PlayStation 5 do? Right? Like getting me to, kind of prompting me to explain what it does and why one needs it. And you know what I said, Jeff? I said, new Spider-Man game? Well, it plays Spider-Man Miles Morales. And she said okay, so I guess we got to get one. And I was like, you're darn right. You're darn right. This is a yeah. great way to open this show. Yes. I mean, I loved the original Spider-Man. Mm -hmm. uh, my only not counting like games where you get the platinum just because you finished the story, but my only platinum trophy in my PS4 lineup that I'm proud of. Yeah. Like I played that game too. I loved it. And Spider, and I mean, it's, I was kind of disappointed they're not going to continue with Peter just because, uh, what's his name, Yuri Lowenthal, is that who played Peter? Yeah. Yeah, so he is my second favorite Spider-Man and everyone who's played Spider-Man. Okay, that's fair. I mean, it sounded like he was in there, because, I mean, you definitely heard Yuri's voice yeah. in the trailer. So I would be sh stunned if he is not at least around. Um, but this is definitely going to focus on Miles Morales. I guess the real question is, is this a full-on, like, is this Spider-Man 2? Or is this a, uh, you know, like a side story that's going to be like a bigger game that could have been DLC, that type of thing. Kind of like uh, Uncharted Lost Legacy. Hard yeah. to know. We'll know more details. But you know what? No matter which of those two things it is, I am all in on a new Spider-Man game. Yes, most definitely. Next thing they announced... Um, now, this is going to sound boring to some people. And my sons were like, Dad, why are you freaking out about this? But I'm going to be real. They put Polyphony Digital up on that screen. And I immediately, immediately got hype. And that's because Polyphony Digital makes Gran Turismo. And Gran Turismo is like, you know, my, my oldest son was like, uh, this just looks like Forza. And I was like, no, 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 son. Forza looks like Gran Turismo. That's It's just they stopped. <laughs> but, like, Gran Turismo was the pinnacle of racing games. And Forza clearly is eating its lunch. Um, the thing about Polyphony is that they, they don't make games fast. They just make games on their own time. And so this game, man, it looks so pretty. It, looks it did. So cool. It looked really good. And so, yeah, I'm gonna play the I'm gonna play the heck out of it. I cannot wait for Gran Turismo Seven. Jeff, Jeff, where were you at? Or were you at? This is pretty, but I'm never gonna play this video game. Probably though, I did really enjoy Forza, but I think I kept thinking back to Forza because Forza I feel like is more of an arcadey racing game. Well, that's because you're playing Forza Horizons, yes. Oh uh, yes, I played so, the Forza Horizons on yeah. Xbox One. So Forza Motorsports is the better analog to Gran Turismo 7, and these are simulation racers. So yeah. these are not games that you're going to, you know, they're not arcade racing games. Yeah, see, it's I prefer my hard. arcade racing games. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, Gran Turismo 7 is going to be hard. It's going to kick you in the pants. It's going to be tough. But, man, the cars look super cool. I cannot wait to see what Polyphony does with... Specifically, I'm really excited about the low load times. Because... 
one of the downsides to racing games is that there's all sorts of like loading screens to get anywhere, right? And being able to just pop right into a race sounds really awesome to me. Yeah. Um, especially since Gran Turismo 7, you know, Gran Turismo, a lot of the races are on tracks. It's not like you're driving all over this open world. So as a result, they really should be able to load those tracks very quickly. Very excited. But wait, there's more. The next thing that they announced was a new Ratchet and Clank game, Jeff. This happens to be one of my highlighted games. So take it away. Tell us about the new Ratchet and Clank. So Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. Mm -hmm. Uh, You're playing as Ratchet and Clank. First, they started with kind of a cinematic trailer where he's just jumping through rifts, going through different worlds, and then Clank gets pulled away from Ratchet and shows up with... uh, a female Lombax? Is that what he's called? Or am I thinking Jack and Daxter? I might be going... Uh, no, I think she's a Lombax. Lombax, yeah. Okay, I was making sure I wasn't confusing his race with Jack. Pretty sure he's a Lombax. Or Let's Daxter. just go with it. He's a Lombax. Lombax. I don't know if that's true. But it looks... Re- it looked... I mean, as soon as they went into gameplay and you saw him shooting the gun, you, he did a little twirly jump to the side. I'm like, yes, this is Ratchet and Clank. Yes. This is the Ratchet and Clank I'm used to. I I mean, I have every single one on PS2. I have not played the PS3 ones because I've never owned a PS3. But I love the remake they did on PS4. I love me some Ratchet and Clank. Yeah, I this, am like, this, super this, excited. For our purposes... I think Ratchet and Clank is probably going to be the most, like, universally accepted games. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think that that's, that's my thoughts on this one. Um, I think it's going to be a big deal. Hold on. There's somebody. Just a moment. Who's playing something? Give me a moment here. Because somebody's got something making noise. <laughs> John, I just saw you comment about so many pigeons to catch. I am hoping that is not side quest in the new Spider-Man game. Really helping. Hated that. Um, you'll never guess. It was not one of the kids. Thanks, honey. She was watching. <laughs> but also had, like, classical music playing on her laptop. Who knows? I don't know. Um, Okay. I think Ratchet & Clank is quietly, when we look at this full list, I think Ratchet & Clank is quietly going to be one of the most, one of the most played games. Spider-Man may challenge it. Oh, we got a, um, let's see here. Allison has a question. She wants to know, the, oh, she uh, probably asked that while you were gone. Yeah, but. she wants to know. Oh, did you ask questions? Uh, ask for questions? Uh, well, no, I just commented on John's comment about so many pigeons. I said, I hope they do not bring that back. Oh, the that pigeons is one are definitely thing. coming back. Uh, Allison says she wants to know what your favorite figurine is on the shelves uh, behind you. Um, many of I those are know. amiibos, just to nerd out a little bit. Many of those are amiibos. I have my Detective Pikachu. Yeah. Uh, actually... We're going to go on a tour. My day with Pikachu set, I'm missing one. Okay. I don't know if people can see this because I can't see, but that's probably... Pokemon Center came out with one each month. I was crazy and went, I'm going to catch them all because it's Pokemon. I missed one because it came out when I was at work, and I, and then they sold out. Okay. But that would probably be my figure, favorite figurines. All right. I like those. Um, they are cool. I have an EV too. There, the EV they started with because they're doing EVs now and that evolutions. Um, but then I stopped because I'm like I can't afford those. These are more expensive than pop figures. Yeah, yeah. It gets a little crazy. It gets a little crazy, and you got a kid. So I, yeah. So I decided to go with just my Pokemon pops. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, it's worth okay. mentioning. Eventually, they're going to make 900 of those. So it will eventually hey, become... I have four that's supposed to be coming back, getting shipped to my house, and whichever ones oh. are coming out in July. Oh, I know. Oh, and they haven't we... announced any new ones yet, so... We talked about that. When you get them, you should uh, take pictures of them so we can put them on our Instagram. Um, okay, so 
That's Rat and, Ratchet and Clank rift apart. Um, okay, next. Okay, so I want to talk about how much Sony played with my emotions. Okay? So, Spider-Man, right out the gate. I mean, GTA, whatever. But they showed us the Rockstar logo, and I was like, ooh, are they going to show GTA 6? Then they didn't. Then Spider-Man. Then Polyphony Digital with Gran Turismo 7. Then Ratchet and Clank. Then up comes the Square Enix logo, followed by the Luminous logo. Now, Luminous is their engine, and it's their engine, and it's also there is a team within their company. And I looked at my son, Evan, who was sitting next to me, and I was like, Evan, are they going to do this? Are they going to show me Final Wait, Fantasy 16? Final Fantasy 16, yeah. I thought so, too, and I like I leaned forward, and... I was like, oh, <laughs> excuse me? Is this going to be Final Fantasy 16? Um... Uh, but going back a little bit, uh, Kate Davis, EFG super fan, says uh, she's excited for Miles. Uh, us too, very excited for Miles. Cannot wait for that. So um, they, I thought they were going to show us Final Fantasy 16, and then it turned out to not be. However, I'm pretty excited about it. It's a game called Project Athia. We don't know its rating yet. Um, it looks to be T rated so far, but we're, there's, we've seen what like 45 seconds worth of uh, worth of trailer. I mean. I love Square Enix. Like, I mean, I can't say they don't do any wrong because they've done wrong. <laughs> but yeah, look, but I'm playing the gets, hell out of this game. Yeah, it gets me excited. I ready if it's a nice action RPG, yeah. or even if it's like set like like even Squares. Like, I like Squares Tomb Raider games they put out. Mm-hmm. Um, so basically it looks like an action RPG with a female centered character, um, that is, you know, a wizardy person who can like do a cool jump dash. That's really what we know. And we know there's like a werewolf and a dragon. I mean, cool. I mean, werewolf, dragon jumping across like a weird landscape. The clouds looked amazing. So this game's probably not going to come out for a couple of years. We got some time for it, but it's Project Athia. My favorite part of this was that as soon as the trailer was done, they were doing this awesome transition to the next trailer, and my son Evan looks at me and he goes, Dad, I don't know why they didn't just call it Athia. Because they called it Project Octopath Traveler, and then they just released Octopath Traveler. They should just call this Athia and save themselves time. And I was like, you know what, Evan? You're right. You're right. <laughs> they should. They should just call this. So that may be its name when it finally comes out. Um... Yeah, I, I would. I'm not a betting man anymore, but uh, I'm fairly certain that it is uh, <laughs> that it's just going to be called Athia. So uh, next after that, this is uh, Amanda Farrow, uh, co-host of the Engaged Family Gaming podcast with me. This is her game. It's called Stray, and so you are a cat, um, but you live amongst robots. Yeah, it looked really cool. Like, I was expecting the robots to be the main feature, but then it turns out that you're playing the cat. Yeah, was the cat alive? The cat was not like a fake cat, right? The cat was like a cat. I mean, at first, I thought we were going to have a Professor McGonagall situation and Animagus. Yeah, that's some... That's some... (laughs) That's some deep... That's a deep cut. Um... Well, so, he, it was wearing a backpack, if I remember correctly, it right? Have, it had like so it looked like it was fake, but it's <laughs> it's not. I'm pretty sure that it's you are a cat. You're chilling. <laughs> um, it's a cat. You are chilling amongst robots. Um, it looks kind of neat. I I mean I don't know. We'll see what it is. Uh, John Robel watching here. Project Apnea. It's just a sleep study. <laughs> um, I mean that's that would not be a very good game, but I am sure. That, that it is somewhere on itch.io. Um, which reminds me, oh my goodness, Jeff, do I have, uh, I should have mentioned this at the top of the hour, do I have a great giveaway for today? Jeff, this is the part where you say, whoa, Steve, what do you mean by a great giveaway today? Whoa, Steve, what do you mean by a great giveaway today? Um, somewhere in the next handful of games, we're going to... Um, you know, we're going to ask for some comments, everybody's favorite game from the uh, announcements. Uh, and we're going to pick one of them at random. I'm going to roll dice in the order that they uh, did that, that they left their comments. Um, itch.io, which is a storefront 
is uh, running a giveaway right now. It's not a giveaway right now. They're doing a bundle right now with uh, – it's raised over $5 million. It's a pay what you want uh, with a minimum of $5. Right now, Jeff, how many video games are part of this itch.io bundle? Guess. Take a guess. I'm trying to think. 1,127. Oh, because you actually know. Um, is that the actual number? Because I saw it. Is that is that the actual number? Well, it's gone up. Okay. It was that number at one point, I know. Yes. Um, all right, let me get it. It's the bundle for racial justice and equality. Okay. It's one that... Right. <laughs> this bundle, which I am giving away one of today, um, is no joke. This is not... I'm not fooling. Uh, it is 1,637 things. Now, wow. not all of them are video games. Some of them are PDFs for role-playing games. Some of them are tile sets if you wanted to make a game, etc. But a huge number of them are games. Included in this bundle is Overland from Finji, which is a interesting... It's like Oregon Trail post-Alien Takeover. Uh, Night in the Woods... By oh, I played that game. That's a, a bad short, game. A short a hike. Game. A short hike, which I streamed during one of my uh, early COVID streams. Celeste. That is a great game and probably one of my favorite indie games ever. Now, if I just told you for five bucks you get all those games, that's a great deal in and of itself. Five bucks for Celeste on its own is a great deal. True facts. But then, I'm sitting on my phone here, and I just keep scrolling. Oh, by the way, Minute is on there. You know, Minute, the I've heard it. Minute. We play a duck. You basically play a duck, and you die every minute. But the things yeah. you did, consi- like, legit, guys, this is crazy. Tons of games here. Um not all of them family friendly. Uh, cat lateral damage is in this list, so we're gonna. I'm gonna give away one of these at the end of all the game announcements. We're gonna ask everybody to share uh, their stuff, and we go. Um, so if you want 1,600 games, stick around. Stay till the end. Stick stick around, um, and we'll we will uh, get you that uh, the whole thing. We'll talk about it. So and they're splitting the proceeds 50-50. Between, uh, what is it? Let's see here. Uh, it's split between the NCAA, the NAACP, uh, Legal Defense and Education Fund, and the Community Bail Fund. 50-50. Um, Jacob just stole my wife's phone and typed yeet into our chat. So you can tell my wife is absolutely paying attention to her telephone. Um, okay, so... Yeah, so if you want 1,600 things, stick around. So, Stray. Uh, this is an Amanda game. You play a cat, hanging out with robots. It looks a little dark, but at the same time, like it's kind of a neat adventure game. I don't know how yeah. they're going to do a story or anything like that, uh, but it certainly looked pretty. I'm going to guess it's going to be rated T, but I couldn't tell. We had no idea. This is one of those. Yeah. This could be neat, but it's definitely a Amanda game. So, uh, next... It's from Housemark. Again, this is another one where I saw the name of the company and I was like, ooh, what are they going to do? This is definitely rated M material. Uh, it's a game called Returnal. Uh, and uh, Returnal is a woman who crashes on an alien planet and every time she dies, she comes back to life. So it's kind of like that, um, I mean, Lord knows, this is a science fiction trope. She's stuck in a time loop. Um, it's like that Tom Cruise movie. Um, but it's got some weird, you know, sci-fi body horror elements and stuff. Uh, it looks cool. Housemark makes good games. Typically, they make arcade-style games. However, whatever. What do you think of this one, Jeff? I'm gonna be honest. I know I just watched it recently. I don't remember anything, so it must have not left a great mark on my mind. I mean, I have the advantage. Um, yeah, Kate agrees with me. It's like that Tom Cruise movie. Um, so yeah, it's, um, th- the reason that I remember it is because I'm cheating. Cause I have a list right there. Well, um, I have a list of games. I just didn't write anything about the games because that's kind of how I go about these announcements is if it didn't like have anything to remind me, I feel like it's just not 
it didn't catch my interest. I totally agree with you. And yeah, you know what? This is one of those ones that I think is somebody is going to be really into this. They're really going to love the the aesthetic and you know the idea. Not for me. Um, how about next? What do you think about Sackboy, a big a big adventure? My first question is: Is it going to have the creation elements that original Little Big Planet games had? It didn't. This Let us not, know that. This is not a Little Big Planet game. This is a Sackboy game. So I think it, no. Are, and it's also not made by the same company. This is made by is, Sumo okay. Digital. So my guess is that it is a 3D action platformer with Sackboy yeah. in it. If that's the case, I'm I'm all in. I love 3D platforms. I love 2D platforms, 3D platforms, games. They are my jam. I'm all in. Mm -hmm. It looks great. Uh, the aesthetics look amazing. It gave me... Uh, uh, Yoshi's Woolly World vibe mm -hmm. with yeah. all the yarn, well, and I know Sack. Out of, you know, well, yeah, and Sack Boy. Mold. I know Sack Boy did it first. Little Big Planet did it first, but uh, the last. But it's Little okay. Big You're a Nintendo fanboy, so am I. It's okay. Yeah, it's okay. So here's what I what I think about this for Sack Boy: The Big Adventure. Why I'm so excited about it is because I was always wondering, like Sack Boy is such a really it's a cool mascot, right? Sony needs a family friendly pl presence. They need a mascot. Yep. They need somebody that can, you know, that can kind of play in that space. But I was always concerned that he was going to be stuck with Little Big Planet. And the problem with Little Big Planet, not that they're, and, and this is not a big problem, but it is an issue, is that in order to make a Little Big Planet, you need to have level creation, right? Like that's part of the yeah. deal. And so that does kind of hamstring Sackboy, right? Um, because that means he's kind of stuck with these play, create, share games. By giving just his own adventure where you, you know, get costumes and stuff like that, that's awesome, right? Like, let because the cool part about dressing up Sackboy and doing stupid stuff, like, you don't need to create levels to do that. I'm super excited. Um, I can't wait to see, you know, what they do. I think this is a cool idea. Sackboy, a big adventure. Just make a 3D, just a 3D platformer with Sackboy. Perfect. Now, I'm really curious about your, your opinions on this next one. So the next game they announced was a game called Destruction All-Stars. Here's my pitch on this one, guys. It's Rocket League slash pro wrestling. And it's a Destruction Derby. Yeah, Destruction Derby. I mean, it looked really cool. Uh, with it being called All-Stars, I really wish they kind of brought it back to PlayStation All-Stars and had your characters be different PlayStation characters and driving their vehicles based off of their games, that would have been cool. Maybe. Maybe. But that game didn't go very well. It didn't. No. Uh, but, I mean, Destruction Derby games are fun. I remember playing the original Destruction Derby on the PlayStation 1. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or the Demolition Derby, yeah. The original Demolition Derby on PlayStation 1, and this kind of seems to be... Uh, Upgraded spiritual successor. Listen, this looks like one of those games that is, if it is done correctly, is going to be bananas. And um, I, you know, it already looks kind of fun. It looks stupid. The, some of the mascots for the different, you know, it looks great to me. Uh, so we'll see how it is executed. But I can't wait to see some of this. This is like one of those games that I'm going to love to watch on stream. Um, yeah. So, after that, they showed us Kina, Bridge of Spirits. This is a super adorable... I, I, people throw around, like, Pixar-like. But this really kind of looked Pixar-like. And it's just an adventure game. You're a little wizard girl with magical powers. Uh, you have, a like, a staff that you can turn into a bow that you can whack dudes with. Um, it looked great. Yeah, I mean, it was one of the games I've highlighted. It looked fun. I mean, it didn't really reveal much, but if, I mean, it comes out and it gets good reviews, reports, I definitely would pick it up and play it. Yeah, I like third-person action games where you play as, like, wizards and stuff. So I'm kind of in. Um, next, uh, they <laughs> announced a game called Goodbye Volcano High. So... I have the perfect description of the game. It sure, looked like it. one of those cartoons you would find on Comedy Central or MTV. Yep. Like a Beavis and Butthead, Daria type thing. Yeah. No, absolutely it does. It absolutely uh, does. 
And so, I mean, they didn't really show gameplay. Like, is it all in this cartoony style? You don't really know. I, I'm wondering if it's going to be kind of a, kind of a walking simulator. Sorry. That's, that's what I think it will be. But besides the trailer, they didn't really reveal much. They truthfully did not. Um, I'm excited about it though. I mean, it looks kind of cool. There's some, uh, you know, in the there was some action in the EFG Discord um, with the uh, with some folks saying that their kids were kind of excited about that game just because you know dinosaurs. Um, I also don't know. I I don't know. That's another game that you don't know what it's going to be rated. Is it for kids? Is it going to be T rated? Or is it going to have a very mature storyline? True. What's really interesting to me is that it's like a so it's a high school, and they're presumably graduating from high school. That's but, what I'm assuming with the goodbye, uh, yeah. But also, like, Volcano, and there was, like, definitely, like, some, like, you know, some, the end of the dinosaurs themes going with me. So, I don't know. It's going to be interesting. We'll see. Yeah, this is another one that could go that could go all over the place. So, we'll have to see. Um, After Goodbye Volcano... What do you think about that Odd World game? Odd World Soul Storm. Uh, seeing Abe in 4K is something I now realize I'd never want to see again. <laughs> yeah, it was gross. <laughs> it was gross. I mean, like you watch on the PlayStation One or even those remakes on the PS4, like they don't look bad. But then all that 4K goodness, and he is like, this is kind of disturbing, and I don't know if I want to play this game. It did look more of like a platformer than his previous games, because previous games were more of a puzzle type. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, it'll be interesting to see. Um, they, I, I was weirded out by, they said that it, like failing was going to be like hilarious, and I don't... Well, that's kind of what those games are known for, you, it, because um, back in the 90s, you know, they had what they called a cinematic platformer. Yeah. Where it's not really a platform game. I mean, there was this flashback for the SNES. If you look up that one, it's about the same. Where the goal of the game is to solve the puzzles, but you fail so many times. So the fun part was to see how many death animations they came up with. All right. Okay. I mean, so, sure. It seems fine. Um. So that was a, a Odd World Soulstorm. I definitely don't want to see Abe in 4K. I don't need that. So no. this is not going to be a game I will be playing. Um, next was Ghostwire Tokyo. This was announced uh, at last year's E3 by Bethesda. Um, and this is definitely too spoopy for me. Uh, it's set in Tokyo. Uh, it's like ghosts everywhere. And you're it's a first-person game. And you're yeah, it looks crazy. It's coming in yeah. 2021. This is not a game for me. But if you like spooky, like weird, surreal games that have like a Japanese spiritual thing, like maybe give it a look. Cause you're like casting spells with your hands and stuff. I, it was too scary for me. Everything else looked great. It just looks like it would scare me and I'm a coward. Me too. Believe me. There's a reason I never finished the first Bioshock game. Yeah. So I'm scared. Uh, I'm scared. I'm still scared from that trailer. So uh, <laughs> next uh, super brothers. Oh, um, I did announced. One. Jet the Far Shore. Uh, it oh, is, no. I am on the right one. Okay. Never mind. It is a uh, it was a space game. That's really all we know. It's in space. Yeah, I didn't. I don't really have much to say about it. Looks like it was in space. So if you like space stuff, give Jet the Far Shore a look. Um, we really, they really did. And in this case, we really just had have not much to go by, except for Super Brothers, good developer. Um, and you know, it looks. I mean, it looks pretty for a space game. Next. All right. I want to talk a little bit about Godfall. I will say I think you do have the advantage because you know these developers a lot better than I do. Well, it's because I've been doing this for a while, Jeff. Give yourself some time and some credit. (laughs) Eventually, you will take all the Pokemon names that you have memorized and replace some of them with learning about some of these developers. So uh, let's talk about Godfall. Godfall. It looks cool. It looks super cool. You want to talk about a Steve game. (laughs) Okay. Godfall is a Steve game. Now, again, uh, we don't know the rating. Uh, it looks like it's going to be T-rated, kind of like Destiny. Um, what it feels like is it looks like a cross between Destiny and, like, God of War. 
where you are a dude or a lady in a big old suit of armor with a big old stupid weapon and you're fighting big old monsters. This is the kind of game that like four or five years ago they would have released this trailer and would 100% have been cut to Kanye West's power. <laughs> it's just 100%. Wait, what? Um, John says he, you won't remember these. It's just going to be the Pokemon. The Pokemon will hold on to your knowledge spot. Um, he's he's probably right. He's probably but... right. He's probably right. Um, but you're smart. You can take notes. Um, you'll be all right. We'll be there. So, um, so yeah, Godfall. It's coming out this year, um, this holiday. It is a so where Borderlands, which also from Gearbox, is a looter shooter. This is a looter slasher. So basically, you are. It's all about gathering cool weapons and equipping godlike armor. Uh, and I love me some godlike armor. Um, it will never have the judgment armor, which is my favorite suit of armor of all time. However, I'm sure it's going to have some cool stuff. I mean, this just looks like extra dumb and I can't wait. Uh, my, my real only question is how hard is the combat? Like, can I just run around yeah. and just roll my face on my controller and kill monsters? If so, I'm in. Yeah. That's, that's the only thing. If it's going to be like dark souls, I immediately fall out. If it's... Yeah, we have no idea. Which we can talk about that later down yeah. the line. Yeah, we'll, we'll have an but, opportunity to talk about about Souls likes. Yeah, we'll be able to do that in a little bit. Uh, next is a game called Solar Ash from the same developers of Hyper Light Drifter. Look like one of them cool indie games where you run around yep. and do some crazy stuff. Probably gonna be running around upside down in a three D environment. The character looked cool. Um, it looked the, really pretty. Yeah, the best endorsement I can give you is my son Jake said, "Dad, we should buy this game because I want to play this game." There you go. That's it. Sounds wonderful. Uh, this sounds like a game we will likely play on Game Pass. <laughs> um, but I bet you it's going to look very, very pretty. Uh, next is Hitman 3. All right. If you know what Hitman is, Hitman 3 is more Hitman. This Hitman 3. Uh, if you don't know what Hitman is, mm, it's definitely not for the kids, obviously. So nope. play a Hitman. Basically, the idea is they unleash this assassin in big sandbox style environments and they will give you a target who is so they'll be like here you are at this art museum you have to use whatever skills you have to analyze the environment and get and get this one target and you have a number of different ways to do that you can disguise yourself you can run and gun you can do all sorts of stuff um, usually run and gun doesn't work it though. doesn't usually work but you can a little bit so that's um, problem i have no stealth skills my wife will make fun of me if she's watching me play a game that i'm supposed to be stealthy like assassin's creed odyssey because i just go in guns a blazing or swords a blazing because i want to be clear assassin's creed odyssey does not need to be played as a stealth game i do not play it as a stealth game um you don't have to you can just set your swords on fire and just roll into the like just kick the front door down and just fight everybody um yes so it's similar to the hitman movie kate the difference is that the Hitman games are actually good. Um, and really, this is, again, it's not for the kids, but these are uh, these are the kind of games where it's really all about planning. It's, okay, I need to get this one guy, I need to set a target, and you really play through the levels. And there are in any number of ways to get them because you might be able to shoot them, you can poison them, you can do all sorts of stuff like that. Again, not for the kids, but for those grown-ups that are interested... It's an interesting gameplay. It's more like a puzzle than a stealth game because it's really yeah. more about kind of figuring out the environments. And I will say out of all these games announced, it is one of the games that I think really showed the power of the PS5 because it looked really good. Yeah, this is going to be one of those games that with the fast load times, you know, the the fact that they're going to be able to have lots of en enemy AI, this is going to be some really interesting playgrounds to do hitman -y stuff. Again, yeah. Not for the kids, but for grown-ups that are interested in this, um, this should be an interesting experience. This team has been through a lot. Uh, Hitman was, you know, they experimented with, like, a new release, you know, like a new way of releasing it for Hitman 2, where they did it kind of episodically, where it was, like, one kind of playground level at a time. And so now they've bought back their own rights. They're, you know, th th so this is a really, this is kind of a feel good story. The fact that this game exists. So really interested to see how it comes out. Uh, and this is supposed to be the end of a trilogy. Who knows? Um, next was Astro's Playroom, which is so Super Astrobot was a PS uh, was a PlayStation uh, VR game, 
Astros Playroom looks like it's going to be a game that you're going to play to learn all about how the PlayStation DualSense controller works. That's that's what it looks like it's telling me. So pretty much PlayStation's version of Nintendo Land. Uh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Um, and I'm not sure I'm mad about that. So, um, listen, Astrobot's super cute. You know, if you like Astrobot, it, it, if you like cute little robots, this game is at least worth, it's worth at least looking at the YouTube video. Um, this is a cute little robot running around doing stuff. Um, next after that, they announced, uh, Little Devil Inside, which is an adventure game that has like an interesting, like paper craft aesthetic. Everything looked like it was made out of like, did it, it looked paper crafty to me. What did it look like to you, Jeff? I don't know if paper crafty, I don't really know. It, it had almost, I mean, an indie art style, which I know I'm not, you know, going against indie developers, but, you know, just kind of like, you know, trying itself out with a new art style, but I don't know how to describe it. You know what we're going to do? We're going to go to the YouTube because we have the advantage of not having to guess. So we're going to just do the magic of the YouTube. But also it's another one of those games that I don't remember a whole lot. It didn't leave that much of an impression. I get it. So we're going to grab it. Forgive me, everyone, while we mix things up a little bit. <laughs> All right, here we... Okay, so this is from IGN, but we'll go with it. So let me get to the picture in the picture. There we go. Here we go. You guys can kind of see what I mean when I say that it looks kind of paper crafty, right? Yeah. Almost like paper crafting combined with claymation. Yeah, kind of. It's definitely interesting. Um, again, we have we don't know really a lot about this game. <coughs> yeah. But you apparently uh, played this guy. We, yeah, I'll be interested when we learn more. Yeah. Ah. It looks cool. Looks like you go to different, you know, areas, a desert, the forest. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> That's definitely a poop joke. Okay, that's mad creepy. Uh, yes, John. He was, in fact, surfing on sand penguins. <laughs> All right. So, um... Kate actually is with us. She says, the boxiness and cell shading definitely give it, like, a paper craft meets claymation look so there you go jeff you win the prize so yeah that looks really neat i i mean i don't know a lot about it we don't know what the gameplay is going to be like but it's super interesting um okay so next they announced a sports game jeff just like you predicted last week uh nba yep. 2k21 yo now, I know not everybody's down with the sports ball. Well, I mean, our sports game that was going to be announced last week was supposed to be on the EA Play, which was supposed to happen today. So Fair, fair. But they announced the sports game. It wasn't an EA yeah. game. Uh, NBA 2K21, yo, that game looked pretty. They had a guy in a dark gym with the light, 
and the individual sweat beads down his head looked absolutely bonkers. I'm just going to say this right now. NBA, the NBA 2K series is one of the best role-playing franchises out right now. They are straight-up role-playing games. Straight up. And it is they are among the best role-playing games produced, and they put one out every single year. And I love it. I know you're not a basketball guy, Jeff. Nope. I did play 2K20 a couple months ago, though. Um, Let's just say I got to the point during the My Career mode up until the point where I actually had to play some basketball. All right. Okay. So, um, so John's making a, a – is that a COVID NBA joke that you're making, John, about all taking place in Orlando? Is the NBA all taking place in Orlando? Am I missing something? Um I have truthfully not been following professional sports other than the whole NASCAR thing the other day. Which yes, they're playing the playoffs, I think, in Disneyland. That's awesome. And Major League Soccer might be playing at Disneyland, too. Sure. All right. Well, it's basically its own country. So, uh, next. Bug Snacks. That one got a good laugh out of me. I mean, listen, I mean, so it's the people that made Octodad, and if you haven't played Octodad, you should go look up Octodad. Um, Bug Snacks is a game um, where you play like a Steve Irwin style, like uh, like Wild Life Expert, you know, Crikey, whatever. But like all the critters are made out of fruit. Oh, Sarah. And if I Sarah Larner, uh, thank you for watching the FG show. Uh, she says she wants to go to Disney. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I want to go to Disney too, but like I don't know if I'm like cool with the crowds. Like, what what are we like? Well, I think it's gonna be a you, while before I'm not freaked out by crowds. Yeah, and I mean they're not opening till July 11th. I mean Universal just opened last week, and somehow I hear it's not horrible, but I don't think I'd want to go. I'm a coward, guys. Um, you know, like I'm a coward. But, you know, great. I mean, the uh, so bug snacks. So all the creatures, so like the first thing they showed you was like crabs that were strawberries. But then there was like burger critters and like there were there were centipedes that were ribs. And if I, there was like one club sandwich that was just a, a big long centipede and was segmented. Yep. Uh, and if, when the ate them like his arm turned to strawberries uh yeah i don't have any idea what the heck happened I, um, I, this I is one know, of those but... games that we're gonna just have to kind of see because i also don't really understand what the objective is like what's the point of this game and it could be that the the, the point of the game is snacks at which point you would think that it would 100 percent be my game but yeah i don't know if it's made by the people that did octodad i just feel like you know Octodad came out at a time when we were getting a bunch of those weird games. Mm -hmm. You know, in the span of a couple years, we had Octodad, uh, Goat Simulator, mm -hmm. I Am Bread. Mm -hmm. And it's like, then I guess the people from Octodad just never left making those type of games. Nope. Ooh, excuse me. Um, it's been a long day. Um, yeah, so... I don't know, man. We're going to have to see. I just, we're just going to have to find out more about what these games are. But we're going to have to wait. Um, okay. So, uh, Demon Souls. I'm going to give you the sales pitch right here. It is a remaster of a PS3 game made by the team that is responsible for Dark Souls and Bloodborne. But it's Demon Souls. It's a different franchise. It has a lot of the same DNA. It's a remake and it's a different franchise because when they made Demon Souls, it was, it was published under a different name. And so when they went off and made a different game, they had to change it. So they called it Dark Souls. It's complicated, whatever. Um, if you like those kinds of games, you are unquestionably hype for this. If you do not like those kind of games, then this was just a weird three or four minute gothic horror short movie with a giant yeah. golem with a giant shield. I will say I, no want in to like, I want to like these type of games. I just can't. Yeah. Um, these are, I, I, that is 
super accurate. So this is one of those things you were either like when that trailer went, went live, right? And people were watching it. You were one of two things. You were either literally on fire with excitement or you fell asleep. That was it. It was in the middle. Um, I was appreciating it and excited for my brother who is very hungry for this game. Um, but what are you going to do? Uh, not for the kids. Um, next, Deathloop, also not for the kids. This is another one of those, when you die, you start over, but this one is very, like, grindhouse. Uh, if you are interested in that kind of time loopy, you die, you start over a thing, um, I would definitely encourage you to go look up Deathloop on YouTube. Um, next, and, and I'm going quickly because there's just a bunch of M-rated video games, and I just want to get through them. Um, so that's Deathloop. Definitely encourage you to look that up. Next is Resident Evil 8 Village. Um, it's village because like the V and the I and the, and the two L's make like eight because the L's, they like only painted part of the L yellow to make it an eight. I don't know. It's very creative. Um, <laughs> whatever, man, it's zombies and stuff. It was another one of those games that made the PS5 look very strong. Like, yeah, oh, oh, it looks really good. You were either one of two. You were one of two things during this trailer. You were either on fire with excitement because OMG Resident Evil Eight, or you were like me and you were like, "Uh," because I'm not going to play that game. Yeah, but I've am, never played a Resident yeah, Evil. I'll 8 be game. very excited for the people who are very excited. I mean, I read. Of course, I haven't played Resident Evil. 8. I've never played Resident and Resident Evil game. Yeah, that's okay. You don't have to. It's not required. Um. Okay. Next was Pragmata, which is a uh, kind of a post-apocalyptic game. There was a cat that was a hologram. Uh, it was real weird. This game I don't think is ever going to come out. <laughs> That's my... Uh, that is... So it's from Capcom. Uh, I don't know. This is below from Capcom. It's just like, oh, check it out. This is neat. Um... But this is another one that if you like like weird stuff, you should definitely look at the trailer. And again, it's Pragmata. P-R-A-G-M-A-T-A. Okay. The piece de resistance of the... Um, of the... Yes, and I am absolutely snapping my fingers at my sons who are deciding to have a, a conversation while I'm doing a live broadcast. Thanks, guys. Um, and so, <laughs> you know... I'm just I'm just live. Um, Horizon Forbidden West. It's here, Jeff. They gave us the information. It's not out yet. They didn't give us a release window, so probably next year. But it's but we, now we know what it's called, so we don't have to make. My favorite part about this is that now we don't have to hear podcasters call it Horizon. No more of the Horizon One Dawn jokes. I'm just done with them. I'm finished. <laughs> we don't have to have any of those because we knew it was never going to be called anything like that. Now it's Horizon Forbidden West. Uh, yo, Jeff. Yo. It looks good. I like that you're going to play as Alloy again. Yep. Oh, so, man. Uh, they, the elephants looked really cool. Yo, the war elephant thing with, like, the demon energy in it or whatever. Yeah. Oof. Um... It looks the swimming great. looked amazing. I mean, I thought you didn't like water levels, Jeff. I didn't. You being a hypocrite. Horizons Forbidden West. It might turn me around on them. Fair enough. I will admit, and that was just me being silly, calling you hypocrite. Of course, th it's going to be different in every video game. Um, the thing that I was always wondering about is what were they going to do with Horizon as far as the gameplay? Like, what could they yeah. add? Because you need to add at least one thing that's like really dramatic. And it clear, clearly adding underwater elements makes perfect sense. And they, you know, she's going to have this weird like mouth breather, you know, like breathing machine type thing. I am very excited. I'm excited for new monsters. And they showed a bunch of them in that trailer. The big turtle thing, the elephant things, the pterodactyls with the solar wings. Uh, this is... Oh, such a beautiful video game. Now I just want to know what, you know, the story. So the first one, you kind of was learning about this world. And now I feel like this game, they should, you know, the Forbidden West sounds like you might have found a new civilization or something that people weren't allowed to go to. Well, if you looked at, if you, when I listened to the trailer, because I actually watched it again 
yeah, John Roll will fire up the hype train. We're very excited. I am an unmitigated hype monster, and Horizon is... Gosh, I am so waiting for this game. Oh, man. Here's what's real crazy about that. If it comes out next year, you know a game will almost definitely come out next year if it doesn't come out this year? Breath of the Wild 2. Do we want another year with a Horizon and a Breath of the Wild <laughs> game in it? For me, maybe. But that makes my game of the year decision so much more difficult. Um, so watch this trailer. What it appears that there's like a plague that is affecting wildlife. And so she's dealing with that. To see like the weird red plants everywhere um, and stuff like that. I, I don't know. It, it sounds, it's just so wicked cool. I'm so excited for this game. Um, all right. The, yeah. The, the Robles watched the trailer like six times. I watched it three and I showed it to the general. She's been getting ready for graduation uh, at work. So she has not had a lot of time to look at the video game stuff. But I was like, you need to watch this. And she did. And she was like, wow, this, uh, so you're going to get that? And I was like, uh, yeah. yeah. If I could buy it now, I would. Um, so that was the last video game they showed. Now, I do have some stuff that I can show us. Um, they revealed the PlayStation 5. And so let me go ahead and pop that right onto everybody's screen. So uh, here's what we got. Going from left, from left to right, uh, we have the uh, PlayStation 5 controller, which we've already seen. Now, there's two consoles here. Um, so, Jeff, why why do you think they're showing us two consoles here? Because you can either use a disc or you can get an all digital version. Yes, one of them has a disc drive. The other one does not. And so we don't know prices yet or release dates. They said they doubled down a lot on holiday 2020. So we know it's coming this year. Uh, we just don't know a date yet. They said that would come later. We don't know a price either. So what we can assume is that the discless version will be cheaper than the one with an optical drive. So my, I, I think that that's obviously going to be a decision for everybody, um, you know, as far as which one you're going to get. Uh, Jeff, I know you've already made your decision. You're going to get the one with the disk drive in it. Uh, for us, it really comes down, and that's fine. You know what? It really comes down to price for us. I know because for us, we're going to get both the PlayStation 4 or PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series X. The Xbox, we have already determined that we are not going to worry about a disk drive for that. Uh, we buy, we use, that's going to be our Game Pass machine. So for us, you know, we're just, we'll do it that way. And if there's a game yeah. that we really need, we I can mean... buy it digitally. That's the thing, Xbox, like, if if I eventually get in a Series X, that is the one I will get all digital. I have an Xbox One all digital. I'll even say I own one game on my Xbox One, and it's Madden. Yeah. Because every other game, I either play my games with gold or my Game Pass. Yeah, exactly. So the PlayStation is a bit of a question mark for us um, because we're um, – and it ultimately, it comes down to – how much of a price difference it is. Like if it's a difference of like 50 bucks or 75 bucks, then we're going to buy the more, you know, we'll buy the more expensive one, but I'm not necessarily convinced that we don't live in a world where the regular one, you know, the one with the disc drive is 500 and the one without is four. And that's a pretty significant difference for us, especially when we really think about our patterns as far as buying games. So um, you know, we're going to have to decide as we get there. Um, my son, Jake's favorite part of this whole announcement was the headphones. He absolutely loved the white headphones. Um, they look cool. They, they do look nice. And then the rest of the stuff, you know, the, the, the white aesthetic, Evan hates it. He hates every piece of this hardware. He doesn't like the colors. He just wants them to let us buy a black one. He's like, can we, um, can we dip it? Can we get it customized? And I was like, first off, no, because that involves immersing it in water. Uh, <laughs> um, but the uh, – and can we paint it? No. <laughs> um, but it's like we're just going to put it underneath our entertainment center. I think we'll be fine. Well, you know, and I saw – it'd be nice if they gave the option just because I actually saw an argument I never thought of. So this was an – I think it was the IGN Game Scoop fan page you know people just posting about it yep. someone mentioned you know 
he keeps his video game consoles underneath their TV. His wife doesn't play video games, so when she has company, she wants something that looks, you know, fairly uniform. Yep. And then you have this, and it's hard to, you know, like, you know, an Xbox One, a PlayStation just sits under your TV, looks fine, or even a Switch you can put behind the TV, and it still works. Yeah. But then you have this, and it will, it, I mean, it will look a little weird, it's true. If people are really going for the how the aesthetics look. It's true. I, I, I Listen, um, here's how it really comes down to it. Uh, I am very – I am not concerned with the aesthetics of my consoles, largely because I barely look at them. But I can understand it. Evan really doesn't like it. Um, you know, Kate, EFG super fan, she says ultimately it's a machine she doesn't care, but she thinks it looks like a stormtrooper. She kind of wants to paint Baymax on it. See, but Kate, you have, like, artistic skill, so you could do that. I could not paint this. Um, theoretically, Jacob could, but the likelihood of us allowing our 11-year-old to paint a $500 piece of equipment, I do not know. <laughs> but that's the PlayStation 5, and that was the PlayStation 5 event. Uh, you oh. didn't talk about the media remote. Yeah, okay, they got a PlayStation 5 branded remote. <laughs> For media but because it does have a four because it does have a 4k hd blu-ray player so there is well, that and here's the thing like yeah it doesn't i don't know they didn't mention if it comes with the system if it does great if it doesn't that kind of sucks but as a i was thinking because i have a charger for like my xbox one and if i have a long binging session like three four hours by the fourth hour my uh, Xbox control. I have to switch Xbox controllers because it dies. Okay. So, having a remote where you're not using your controller battery is a great. That I mean, I remember back in the PS2 era, we actually had a remote control. You plugged it into the memory card slot, so you could use a remote with your PlayStation 2. Okay, I don't remember that, but. I mean, I, I I think that there. If you're gonna use your PlayStation for, if you're gonna use your PlayStation for like a media center type thing, I, I think the media remote is a good idea. I don't know if it's gonna come with it. I doubt it. I very strongly doubt it. This is gonna be like a thirty dollar piece of equipment you're gonna buy separate. Yeah, but that's fine. So, that's the PlayStation Five. So I would like everybody to leave a comment right now and tell us what was your favorite um what was your favorite announcement from the press conference today and uh we'll give everybody a second to respond and then I will have Siri choose a number between 1 and 3 or however many there's three people watching right now so Uh, we will give everybody a moment. So, Jeff, what was your big announcement? What was your favorite announcement of the day? My favorite had to be Spider-Man. That's a good call. Um, I'm going to say Horizon Forbidden West. I said going into it that I wanted like an, like an oh hell yes moment. And Horizon was my choice. Um, all right. So, here we go. John says Horizon. We knew that because he's been talking about it ever since we got there. Kate said her favorite was probably Horizon, but she's very excited about Miles Morales. Um, that's fine. You can have two favorites. Um, if those are going to be your two favorites, that's a pretty good selection. Uh, and we'll give uh, anybody else watching an opportunity. And let's see here. Uh, for me, it's going to be Horizon. Did I say that already? I can't remember. I chose Horizon. <laughs> that is my favorite. Big surprise. Listen, dude. Um, although, quietly, I am also very excited. As quiet as I can be. Um, uh, I'm very excited about Gran Turismo. Like, I am definitely going to get that game. And I am definitely going to play racing. And I'm definitely going to enjoy it. We're going to give it about 10 more seconds. Before we make a decision. 
I think the third person is me, so because that's the only way I keep track of comments. Okay. So uh, people must have dropped off. We did go long today. We did so. go long. It's okay. Listen, people got responsibilities. Uh, the good news is our videos are all always posted VOD on the YouTube channel, um, and also on our Facebook page. So here's where we're gonna do it. Uh, we got two odds are John. Evens is Kate. So, hey Siri, choose odds or evens. Here's what I found. Oh, she doesn't actually choose odds or evens. Heads or tails. All right, tails. we're going to do heads or tails because she'll do that. Uh, heads for John, tails for Kate. Siri, heads or tails? It's heads this time. She says it's heads. So, who did I say was what? I think that was John. <laughs> I can't remember. I, I did. I wasn't paying attention. You should have remind. You should have warned me that I was gonna have to remember. You, okay, here's your warning. You always need to remember because I can't. <laughs> so, John, congrats. You won the. Uh, the, you won the prize. Um, I'll get with you soon and get you guys your codes. Uh, tons and tons of stuff in there. Um. And, you know, next week we'll be back to our regularly scheduled programming um, where we will. Um, in fact, I'll probably buy another one of those codes and uh, give out another one next week. Cause it's a really good prize. So um, we did it, Jeff. We made it. We, we, we made did it. it through. We talked about the all we covered all of the announcements from the PlayStation 5 reveal event. It was crazy. And we gave away some cool prizes. Um, I, and. With that, that has been another episode of the EFG Show. Everybody, thank you very much for watching. Uh, Jeff and I love doing this every Thursday. This is a lot of fun for us, but it is more fun with you guys here with us. So thank you for engaging and leaving comments. Even though those comments are making fun of me and Jeff, that's okay. Um, <laughs> so uh, we will be back next Thursday. Um, next Thursday, we are going to be talking about EA. Uh, because next Thursday is the Electronic Arts Conference. And IGN has some Summer of Gaming and stuff And IGN happening. has stuff all weekend. So we're going to get all caught up talking about EA, which I'm guessing is going to be a little shorter than the PlayStation 1. Um, and we will be talking all about all the IGN stuff, which is super duper cool. So, um, everybody, until next time, you have yourself a wonderful week. And uh, until then, do not forget... To get your family game on. Bye, guys. Bye.